Oh, and welcome back, Doug and Alea again in our I'll Bring You Soup project. And in this session, we want to talk about the second skill that you need to cultivate, which is Alea. Is meeting your own needs deep in your core. Why so, don't you stop and describe what that's all about? And let's give an example. So take a moment, moment right now and think about what is a core need that you have? Do you have a need to be safe? Do you have a need to be valued, to be loved, respected, appreciated? And when you just take a few deep breaths and you pull your awareness inside and you ask yourself, if I have a core need, what is my core need? Needs are good things. We all have needs. And you identify that core need. And some of the basic core needs, and I'm just going to give you a list of basic core needs. And then Doug, you can also give a list of basic core needs. We have a basic core need for safety, support, connection, validation, respect, appreciation, purpose, to be fulfilled. Doug, any other core needs that you can think of? We have a core need to feel confident, to feel competent, to uh, feel like we are making a difference in the world. We have a core need to be loved and we have a core need to love and to be connected. We have core need to um, self-actualize, to become as good as we can possibly be as a human being, to be self-aware, to be emotionally competent. These are all core needs that we have that are oftentimes repressed through our childhood upbringing and through our society that does not recognize nor value many of these core needs. So with these core needs, that's step one, identify your core need. And you might have multiple core needs and that's fine. Depending on where you are in your process, your journey, a chapter in your life, your current level of self-awareness, evolution, your needs are gonna change as you evolve. And so when you identify your top three, your top five core needs, then the second step is to start becoming more aware of where you are looking for your needs. A lot of the times we are thinking that our needs should be met by people in our life. Or if you accomplish such and such, then a particular need will be addressed. And that is the indicator that you are looking for your needs externally. You essentially have given responsibility for your needs to the outer world, to people in your life, to your goals, to your projects, to your career, to your family, to your children, to God. We give responsibility for our needs away. And the moment you give responsibility for a particular need away, you immediately disempower yourself. And you move into what I call the consciousness of the victim, which then is naturally going to have the victimizer. It's the victim-victimizer cycle that we then go back and forth on. So we play the victim role. Everyone in our life are victimizers, but then we'll swing into being the victimizer and then we'll attack others. Now we're in the victimizer role and the people in our life are victims. And so the way out of that victim victimizer cycle that also has a layer of codependence, because the moment you give responsibility for a particular need away, you're now entering into a codependent relationship. So we've got the victim, the victimizer, the codependence. And if you're super energetically sensitive, that is going to immediately tie into high levels of empathic sensitivity. You are going to empathically feel people in your life and be highly reactive, but you're literally feeling their own emotions. So the way out of that unhealthy cycle that has a tremendous amount of suffering and pain and disempowerment is to, number one, identify your core needs. Number two, awareness that you've been looking for your needs externally. And then step three, start retrieving just with your intent, your imagination, retrieving these little bundles of responsibility for your needs off of everyone in your life, off of everything in your life. And my favorite one-liner is you're fired. 
You are fired from valuing me. You are fired from loving me. You are fired from holding a safe container for me. It is not your job to respect me. It is not your job to connect with me. That is my job. I'm taking that responsibility back. And the moment you take that responsibility back and you fire everyone in your life, you step back into your power. You start being able to actually meet your own needs deep in your core. So step one, identify your core needs. Step two, recognize that you're looking for your needs externally. Step three, fire everybody, retrieve responsibility for meeting those needs. And then step four, start cultivating more awareness of it's my job to respect myself. When you're in relationship with people, when you're talking to people, when you're about to say somebody, say something to someone, ask yourself, why do I want to say that? Oh, if I say that, then maybe they'll respect me. Oh, it's not their job to respect me. That's my job. I'm going to take a minute and feel into what is it inside myself that I could deeply respect. So those are the four steps for starting to practice the second skill set of meeting the needs deep in the core. Do you have any stories that you can share with us about clients of yours that have successfully mastered this skill? I do. In this situation, there is a, a woman that I've been working with, and she is a mother of five, five children, all under the ages of 10, which means she has an incredibly full plate. She's maxed out. She doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. And her, her third child, who is six years old, is, from her expression, a lot, a lot. All the other kids, super easy. But her third kid? a lot. And constantly pushing her boundaries, constantly pulling, constantly wanting more from her. And because it's the third child and she has this guilt inside herself that the third one is getting ignored, doesn't feel special. And so she will overdo with the third child. She'll give more to the third child. And so that third child has never really learned how to meet his own needs. Mommy takes care of everything. But mommy also wants to be respected and appreciated by third child, especially when third child has completely and totally pushed mommy to the edge. And so one morning, the most challenging moment of the day for her is morning time because she's not a morning person. She goes into the child's room to wake up the child and the child doesn't want to wake up child likes sleeping in till 10 <laughs> but school is starts at like eight so child has to wake up at six o'clock and she goes to the bed and the child immediately starts pushing against her and um resisting getting up and she starts to feel this level of frustration and she just spent half an hour making all of the kids lunch and she's feeling really disrespected because her husband also isn't really appreciating everything that she does. So she's been already pushed to the limit by 6 a.m. And she's just trying to get her third child out of bed. And the third child wakes up in kind of a groggy state and says, you don't love me. And that just hits her. It hits her so hard because everything she does is from the place of loving the children. And she feels so profoundly disrespected by the six-year-old of hers. And with a level of self-awareness that she's been working and cultivating with me for over the last three years, she immediately thinks to herself, I don't feel respected by, by the, my child. He doesn't get it at all. And then her next thought is, it's not his job to get it. It's not his job to love me and appreciate me and respect me. That's my job. I chose to have these children. It's not their job to meet my needs. And so she took a moment and she pulled that responsibility, those reference points for being appreciated, respected, loved off of the child. And she could also feel a slightly deeper layer how the child was giving her responsibility for loving him. And she realized, wow, I'm totally disempowering 
my child. I'm holding responsibility for loving them. And in truth, it's their responsibility to love themselves. And if I'm responsible for loving myself, then I can model to my child how to love himself. And so then she did that move of returning that responsibility that wasn't hers back to her child. She consciously held responsibility for meeting her own needs deep in her core. And then she brought in that skill set of validating emotions. And she very compassionately took a few deep breaths, moved into her heart and said, you don't feel loved. And then again, the child still pretty groggy. No. And you're not feeling a lot of love for your own self. No. And you're a little scared that you're going to be, people aren't going to love you at school, that they're not going to, that they're going to shame you. Yes. I don't want to go to school. Oh, because yesterday Billy beat me. Billy hit me in the stomach and told me I was stupid. And you felt really shamed and really upset. She didn't hear this story yesterday. So she didn't take it personally. And she was able to hold a container for her six-year-old to go deeper inside themselves and flush out what this is really about. Her child is afraid of going to school and getting hit in the stomach and being told it's stupid, afraid of being shamed. And it's triggering their sense of lack of self-love. And then she validated again, and you just want to be loved. And you just really, really want to love yourself. Yeah. And then tears and holding and then laughing and then getting dressed and then having breakfast and then jumping in the car and going to school and a totally different experience than it would have been a year prior before she had these skill sets. So this again is an incredibly powerful skill set, combination of skill sets that can make life really lovely and not be a life of tears.